Hi there, I'm Eitan and welcome to Wix Fixer. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you why if you have been using Wix's Velo API reference to get your code snippets, then there is a much better way that you could be writing your JavaScript, particularly when it comes to promises. <music> So if we take a look at this example that I made here, uh, what we have here is a classic search bar with a search button. And we're going to be querying some databases for data and structuring that data in a way that requires several queries one after the other. And queries in Wix are a great example of promises. And if you're not familiar with the term promises, it basically means an asynchronous line of code in JavaScript. Usually in JavaScript, we're used to the fact that every single line of code gets executed one after the other, but promises are asynchronous. That means it's something that usually takes time, like querying a database, because we have to send out the query and wait for the data to come back. And in order to deal with that and make sure that our code is structured in the right way, we have this way of handling promises, which is this dot then terminology. Okay, so by using this dot then, we are handling the response of the promise, and we know that we need to wait for the response of the promise in order to execute the code that is inside this dot then callback function. Um, but the problem arises when we have several asynchronous actions that need to be happening one after the other, and they're all dependent one on the other, and we get this very weird pyramid-like code, which is called also callback hell, okay? And this can continue on and on. And what we're going to be learning today is really a new way to write your code. It's based on uh, updates that have happened to JavaScript in the past few years. And it really can help you create much more concise and clean and readable JavaScript code. So before we get started, I'm just going to show you what this code actually does. Uh, First, I'm going to explain the code and the function, and then I'll show you the preview. So I have this function here, search, and what it does is first it queries a data set for an item that contains in the first name or the last name the search term that I entered in the query. Then after I get that result, okay, so we have the dot then over here, what I do is I query another data set that's called searches, which is basically a log of all previous searches. And I see if this term has been used before. If it has, then I update this text over here to contain the amount of times that it's been searched for. Then I continue to insert both the search query and the amount of results that came out into the searches log to log for next time. Okay, so we have several actions that need to happen one after the other. And this is what it looks like live. So if I search for, just ignore this search bar here, if I search for Bob, not box, Bob, then you'll see that I get the amount of previous searches, the search term that was searched for, and the amount of people uh, that have, sorry, not the amount, but the items that have Bob either in the first name or last name. So this is what we're going to create in our new function, and it's going to have the exact same functionality, but our code will be much more concise and readable. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new function. I'm just going to call that new search. And that will be equal to a function. And you can see here that I'm using the new uh, ES6 way of declaring functions, which is by using a constant. And before the function, I need to use this term async. OK, that tells it that it's an async function. And all of our promises need to be handled inside of a function when we're using async await. If I was to write it before my old function, then I would write it like this, async function search. And you could do it both ways. Great. Now within this function, I'm going to be uh, writing out the code. So here I'm just going to copy this over. And from here, we're going to be refactoring. So first of all, let's deal with these queries. So first, I'm going to break up this query into two queries. And this is something that's also documented in the Wix documentation. So in order to do that, I'm just going to call the first query first name query. And that's going to be equal to 
this first query that I have over here. And I'm going to move this contains up into the same line just for to be concise. And I'm going to copy this line over again and change this to last name. Okay, because we're basically querying both the first name and the last name. This also needs to be changed to last name. And that basically represents this query over here and this query that I have over here. Great. Now we're ready to use our await. And the way we do that is that first we deal with this result that comes back in the callback function of the old way of writing, of dealing with promises. So I say const result, and that will be equal to await, and then uh, the promise. So that would be first name query, or last name query, dot find. Okay, that's our query. And basically what this says, this code is, says is this result will be whatever happens after you wait for these queries to execute and return whatever they get from the database. So after I get the result, I can handle it in the same way that I handled it over here, which was to say that people is equal to result.items and then to console that just to make sure I'm getting back the right thing. Excellent. Now that we did that, we can head over to our second query. And here is a good point to highlight that we're going to need to do some changing in the names of our variables because here, this result is a parameter of a function. So in each stage, it knows that this result is a local variable and not a global variable. But because of the nature of async await, I'm going to actually have to give unique names to each of these results. So here I'm just going to call this uh, people result because this is the result of the querying for different people and change that over there as well. And this next result, I'm going to call this search result. Okay, because this is the result that comes back from our search query and that will be equal to await as well. And here we're just going to put this query that we have over here. So this query for searches title, search query, find. Put that over there. And I'm just going to put this all in one line just to keep it more concise. Excellent. So that is our second uh, query. And as you see, I'm just writing this line after line. And because we're using async await, the, um, the JavaScript knows that it needs to wait for any previous variables that might be uh, that it might be contingent on okay and now that we have executed this uh, search query then we can get the previous search results so let's copy that from over here and this instead of result will just be previous oh, search result sorry excellent now Let's continue. And the next thing that we did was to declare our, uh, to, to change the previous searches text. Okay, and that's the text box right over here, okay, which tells us how many previous searches there have been. And just another highlight of ES6. So here, instead of writing our strings out like that using this plus sign, what you can do instead is use a template literal. So that basically means we're going to use two backticks. And then inside, we can write strings. So search, uh, searches, sorry, that's the term that I have there. And then our variable, we could just put inside a dollar sign and squiggly braces. So previous searches. And I see here that I spelled searches wrong, so that's a good Excellent. And this is how to use template literals, which is also part of modern JavaScript. And it is often easier to use than the old way of uh, writing out strings. Excellent. Now uh, we could just copy over this to insert object. And we are ready to execute our insert. So this will be also be using wait. So I'll do const 
and the result from our insertion, which is this item. So this I can just call item will be equal to await. And then we have our insert, okay, which I can just copy over. Okay, and then we don't need the dot then, we don't need anything. We could just use this item variable in the rest of our code. So what did we do after we got the item? We did all of this. Excellent. So after we got the item back, we change the save message text, which here again, I can use a template literal instead. So I can go like that back ticks and then just copy over this string. And then just use dollar sign item dot instead of this string that I have over here. And we are done. Okay, so all of this is this now. Okay, and you see that everything is line after line. It's much easier to break out the code, break down the code. It's much more concise. And it's all just one after the other. Uh, one thing that you might be thinking to yourself is that what about error handling? Okay, because over here we have that catch error. So we're handling different errors that might come up with these promises. And in the case of async await, so we use something called try and catch. So the way you do that is try and then open parentheses. And here you have catch and error. And then you can, for example, console.log error. And, and then we're just going to copy all of the code that we have over here and put it in between the try and the catch. Okay, and this is the basic way of handling uh, error handling with uh, async await. You might notice that we have a few promises that are executing inside this try. So in terms of catching the error and logging the correct error and stuff like that, it may cause some complexities. So best practice would probably be to only have one await within each try catch, and you can build a wrapper function around that. Um, I'll try to link some examples in the description below to handle that situation, but you'll see that our code will just work just fine uh, like this. So moment of truth, I'm gonna switch out this search function for a new search so that when we click our search button, it will execute the new function that we wrote out using uh, async await. And let's try it out. So I'm going to go into preview mode. And I'm going to search for Bob. And we got searches back five, save search term Bob, but it did not load our uh, repeater. So I'm going to go back to the editor. And let's see uh, where we might have an issue. So here I should have a console log people. Let's add keyword people before, just so I know that that's that console. So I'm going to preview the code again. And I'm going to search for Bob. And we have Bob over here. So the issue is that I have forgotten to copy over the part where we populate the repeater. And that can happen when you're refactoring code. So let's just put this right over here and preview the code one more time. And here we have Bob, search, and Bob came up. And let's try again, Mary, search, and somebody with the Mary in their name came up. So this is an example of how to use async await uh, to handle promises instead of dot then. And the Wix documentation, which overall is quite good, still is written in the old way. I'm guessing they are either in the process of converting it or they are just shaking in fear from the workload that it will be to convert their um, 
API reference over into the uh, new modern JavaScript because the old way does work. Uh, so if you're not handling situations that are too complex, then you can still write JavaScript using that then and everything will work fine. But I highly recommend experimenting and seeing how these new ways of writing JavaScript can work out for you. So if you like this video or you have any questions, uh, please comment below and like and subscribe. I'm releasing videos every day. So if you want to get notified about those videos, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button, and I'll see you next time.